clearer skies ahead this year. As economists forecast Singapore's economy to perform better than in 2023, even as geopolitical uncertainties loom. It comes as advance estimates show economic growth at 2.8% on year in the last quarter, driven by a strong rebound in the key manufacturing sector. Singapore's manufacturing engine roared in the final quarter of 2023, rebounding to a 3.2% growth after four consecutive quarters of contraction. The construction sector also recorded its strongest performance, expanding 9.1% in October and November. But growth in the services sector was flat. We are in a phase where things are normalising. So the momentum has slowed after the very strong recovery. So quarter on quarter, we saw this initial estimate of a slight contraction. But I think once we finalize the figure uh, for Q4, we may see modest growth still uh, in, in, say, accommodation. Um, and, and say food services still. Mr Song expects the continued recovery in manufacturing and services growth to drive Singapore's economy this year. Especially within services, we will be seeing in the coming month whether labour market condition around the world in neighbouring country remains supportive for them coming here on a consistently monthly basis whether confidence remains intact and we still see demand for services being underpinned by such competence. But some analysts are less cheerful. They warn that there remains key uncertainties, such as geopolitical and financial risks. Many major economies like the US, China, uh, Europe, uh, because of high interest rate in the developed markets uh, like US and Europe, uh, they may bite on uh, the consumption demand there. Uh, that could cause uh, export demand to be fairly slow and uh, uh, cause uh, more headwinds to the Singapore manufacturing and uh, external oriented sectors. It's why economists expect the Monetary Authority of Singapore to continue its stance to appreciate the Sing dollar and guard against inflationary pressures. Over the course of this year, if economic growth slows down again, and if inflation uh, continues to be relatively contained, uh, we may see the MAS uh, reduce the pace of the Sing dollar uh, strength uh, over the, the, the next few years. But I, I think uh, the MES will still have to assess uh, the growth and inflation trajectory. Singapore's central bank is expected to announce its monetary policy decision later this month. Up more with John by Professor Sumit Agarwal, Professor of Finance, Economics and Real Estate at the NUS Business School. Thanks for joining us this evening, Professor. Now, uh, preliminary data for last year, growth 1.2%, forecast this year between 1% and 3%. Is this what we can expect, given where the Singapore economy is in terms of how developed it is? I think that's very good. Most developed economies like Singapore or US, they typically grow from one to 2%, maximum 3%. I mean, it's very hard to see uh, numbers of seven, 8% that you can see in India or China. So I think we should be very glad that Singapore is on neg not negative, but at least 1.2. And the last quarter was actually very strong. Uh, it's still here, Professor. Now, the GST is uh, going up or up nine, uh, to 9%. How do you think this is going to affect inflation and do you think that the wage growth this year will keep up? I mean GST is already expected. This was announced two years ago. People know it, many consumers know it, firms know it, small businesses know it. It's just traditionally just a pass-through to the government a tax. So it should not affect anything. And moreover, most businesses are offering essentially a pause on implementation of GST for consumer goods that are actually used every day by the consumers. So the consumers will not really feel a pinch of it. And so it should not be causing inflation and have really minimal effect on even the labor markets. So while this is an issue, but I don't think this will have any significant macroeconomic implications for Singapore. Uh, first, of course, GST hike, uh, that has been mentioned. We, we've had plenty of warning about it. As you mentioned, it's pretty much factored in, priced in. But we have geopolitical tensions which are much harder in some ways to predict and price in. So, for example, supply chain shocks. Right now, the headline issue that comes to mind is what's happening in the Red Sea Houthi attacks there. Uh, should there be more of the same 
or something that expands in terms of the, the war front uh, situation in the Middle East, can we expect uh, there to be further effects on the Singapore economy? I mean, I, I, clearly that is an issue for Singapore because that the trade routes are being disrupted and that could create supply chain problems in the near future as we saw during COVID time. But this is not like COVID. I mean, we know few ships and more because of the uh, in conflict in Gaza, this is erupting. This will die down this year because the war will kind of, it's not a perpetual war. It will come to an end where things will normalize. Uh, the broader question is, are there such problems? Will we emerge and will we see more of these problems? Clearly, yes. Uh, in his New Year message, Professor Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong uh, did warn that we should expect a less favourable external environment ahead. Geopolitics aside, uh, what in your mind is one key risk, that uh, external risk, I should say, that could derail everything this year? I mean, the big thing for Singapore is always China. And if China's economy slows down, as we are seeing it slowing down, and at to what rate it will slow down, that can have implications for Singapore beyond what geopolitical risk that we are seeing in Europe and in Middle East. The good news or the silver lining I would say in that is that Indian economy is doing very well and it will be one of the largest growth economy in the world as a developing economy or the large economies. And I think Singapore can take advantage of that and maybe have a dual focus more to China and also to India so that uh, Singapore can benefit from these two large economies nearby. And thanks so much for joining us this evening, Professor Sumit Agarwal there from the NUS Business School.